Hey everyone, welcome back to Jack Swivel Wildlife. Now today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, over the past few months, I've been collecting footage um, of my frogs in the frog room. And I know you guys are really itching to see um, an in-depth frog room tour, uh, but I don't feel that I have quite enough footage yet. So, as a little precursor, a little bit of a um, sneak peek, we are going to be doing a species highlight on one of my absolute favorite species of frogs, Ufaga histrionica, or the harlequin dart frogs. Now these are actually some of the largest uh, species in the genus Ufaga, which is the species of dart frogs that I work with. Now that word Ufaga can be broken down into two spots. The two O's at the beginning, the U, actually mean egg. And then faga or faga means eater of. So what this word together means is the eater of eggs or egg feeding. And that's actually how we classify this group of frogs. And it's because the females feed the tadpoles in fertile eggs. So what's really cool about this particular species of frog is that the females actually take care of the tadpoles uh, and the males transport and take care of them as well. So what they do is there's this type of plant called a bromeliad or cup plant and it fills with water and so its leaves are kind of shaped like like a like a little U shape that follows into the axle. So it actually holds water in a reservoir. So the parent frogs will actually drop off their little tadpole kid at the pool and will return to that little cup of water to deposit infertile eggs for the offspring to eat. Now this process takes about two months, uh, two to three months uh, for these larger frogs to go from tiny little tadpole uh, to full-fledged frog. Once they are full-fledged froglets, they kind of start hopping out onto the surface of the leaf, testing out their legs, then they hop down to the forest floor and start to feed on microfauna, things like mites, springtails, um, smaller species of insects. And then they gain enough uh, energy to start growing and growing and growing, and then they're able to participate in the reproduction cycle themselves. Uh, so these really beautiful species of frogs are native primarily to Colombia uh, in the forests that are all around in that country. Um, what's sad is that this particular species is under heavy poaching stress because they are not only really beautiful and 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 sought after in the pet trade, uh, but because habitat fragmentation is, is causing their populations to get smaller and smaller. So what's actually really cool about what I'm doing by breeding these frogs is that I'm actually participating in conservation. So I source them from a sustainable source in Colombia called Tesoros de Colombia, and they are a a farming operation that actually will, will take a set amount of frogs from the wild, breed them, and then keep the offspring, but then release the parents. And so then they can take those offspring that have been legally farmed and export them so that we can have a private uh, selection of these organisms in captivity to ease the stress of poaching. Oftentimes when people can find these animals legally um, and, and, and a good amount of them, uh, they're not as willing to go through illegal methods of obtaining these species uh, because, you know, they could get fined or go to jail or, or things like that. And so on top of being able to, to purchase these frogs from a sustainable source, that source is able to take that, that revenue that it makes from breeding these frogs and put it into conservation, protecting the original indigenous uh, ranges of these species. And so that's what I really, really love because not only do I get to work with and keep a lot of beautiful species of frogs, but I get to actively participate in their conservation. Now, what I really like about this species of frog in particular is the variation. There's all types of locales within this species. Some of my favorites are, are Bahia Solano, beautiful black, dark brown frog with red or orange spotting all over. Uh, Histrionica blue, uh, which is a species that, that's got this nice kind of light blue patterning, often on a chocolate or, or dark um, black body. Uh, other species that I've absolutely loved to keep are, are things like the large form redheads. It's one of my favorite locales of this species uh, because my male is just so impressively beautiful. 
So that's part of what I really, really enjoy with working with these particular frogs. So take a look at some of these different locales and how vastly different they can be. Here we have Ufaga histrionica anchakaya, uh, which is a really, really cool uh, locale. A lot of people actually think that this is an integrate between two separate species, uh, the small form redhead and um, Ufaga lamani, which is a different species of Ufaga genus dart frog. Um, I'm not sure if we've found any real tangible evidence to suggest a genetic link between these two, uh, but I can definitely see a resemblance. Now these frogs, just like most species of frogs, uh, call in order to attract a mate to reproduce. So take a look at these beautiful Ufaga histrionica blue, uh, this male courting a female. So you can kind of hear that, that quack-like uh, call in those, those frogs. Uh, that's one of my favorite sounds in the world because that means they're happy, they're breeding, they're doing really well. Um, and so I love to hear that sound when I go into my frog room. Well, that's all we have time for for today. I hope you guys learned a bit about these beautiful species of dart frogs. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on compiling footage for a full in-depth frog room tour. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope this satisfied you for at least a tiny bit of time. And uh, I really hope that the frog room tour lives up to all of your expectations. Remember, like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want shirts, we've got them on Amazon. The link is in the description below. And as always, keep on watching and stay tuned. Keep an eye out for the next episode of Jackson Wildlife. You won't want to miss it.